Shalom. Welcome back to Understanding Hebrew Verb Structure. In this series, we are covering in depth the conjugations for the different verbs and uh, the different binyan and the different tenses for each verb. Remember that by the suffixes, prefixes, and infixes, and the vowel structure for each verb, we can know what is the tense, who is the person, and what is the binyan, or the strength of that verb. Remember that Hebrew only has three tenses, the perfect, or the past, the participle, which we would consider to be the present, and the imperfect, which would be the future. So far we have covered all the binyanim and some of their exceptions in the previous sessions. Today we begin with the perfect or what would be the past tense. So remember that the past tense in Hebrew covers I did, I was doing, or I had been doing. Any finished action is covered in the past tense. Remember we have seven binyanim which are variously defined as mood or strength and we will cover each one of those one at a time. Today we're going to start with the pa'al with the simplest form. Now previously in the participle in the present tense there are only four forms and that is why we start with that because it's the easiest one to grab hold of but the four forms are a, any masculine singular, whether it's I am speaking or you or he is speaking, that is one form. There's a feminine singular, there's a masculine plural, and a feminine plural. We've gone over all those endings in the different binyanim, different prefixes that they take in the different binyanim, but there are only four forms in the participle. As we move into the perfect and the imperfect, we will find that there are ten forms. There's a form for the first person singular, that's regardless of gender, it doesn't matter. A second person masculine, you. A second person feminine, which is also you. A third person masculine, which is he. And a third person feminine, which is she. There is no neutral gender in Hebrew. We don't have any word for it. Everything is either feminine or masculine. On the plural side, we have a first person, we. The second person masculine, also you in English, and also feminine, plural, which is also you. And then we have uh, a third person, one for masculine and one for feminine plural, those are both they in English. English did used to have a singular second person, which was the thous and the these, but those have gone by the wayside. But deep in our heart, we still desire to have a plural you. And so depending upon where you are regionally, you might say y'all or all y'all or you -ins or use guys, but in proper English we only have the one form for the four different groups. If you've gone over our series that we did earlier, you have seen that the perfect tense is characterized by suffixes, and this is a list of the suffixes. I want to go over these a bit slowly because students sometimes get confused between these verb endings and the possessive endings, and they do overlap a little bit. So the past tense for I did something is going to end in T. It will always end in T regardless of the binyan, regardless of the anomalies that we have. Um, in the different weak verbs, which we'll look at in a minute. T is not a possessive ending, it is only a verb ending. For masculine, you have this ta ending. 
For the feminine singular, you have just the tav. It will not. It might have a schwa under it, or it might not, but it has no pronunciation sound. The third person masculine singular in a full root will have the same vowels as the name of the binyan. And so we'll look at that in just a minute. The feminine ending for she will end in hey. Now this possibly could be a possessive ending. The possessive ending for something that belongs to her also ends in hey. So we want to look out for that. The verb ending for we did something is new. This also might be a possessive ending depending on the noun that it's attached to or the preposition. So we have to watch out for that. You masculine plural ends in tem. This is restricted to verb use. The feminine plural ends in ten. This is restricted to verb use. The masculine and feminine plural they is exactly the same form. It ends in u, a shuruk, and this shuruk will have uh, some different endings um, besides a verb ending, so we need to watch out for that. However, it will not be a possessive ending. Let's go on and have a look at our favorite verb, shamar. So, if I guarded something, that is shamarti. If you, if I'm talking to one man, singular, you guarded, that will be shamarta. In a full root, uh, where none of the letters change, it's a strong root. You have shamart for the feminine singular. It does have a shva. For he guarded something, we see shamar. And you see, these are the same vowels that appear in the name of this binyan, which is pa'al. So that's a clue to help you begin to put the vowels on verbs that you're not sure of. If you know the binyan, or you can read the verb and say, oh, this has the vowels that look like this binyan. So you can begin to make that association. Shamra will be for she guarded something. Shamar knew, we did it. Shamar tem, all y'all masculine. Shamar ten, all y'all feminine. And then the plural form, shamru, is the same for masculine and feminine. So we will look at some examples uh, from Psalm 18, verse 22. Ki shamarti darche yudhe Because I have guarded the ways of Yehovah. In Nehemiah 1.7, we have this form shamarnu, and here it's a negative, velo shamarnu et mitzvot. We did not keep the commandments. In Exodus 13.10, here is a masculine second person singular, you guarded. Vishamarta et hachuka hazot. And you guarded this statute. Of course, we are now involved in the evolved conversive, and we might read it in the opposite tense, and you will guard. But it is conjugated for that perfect tense. Genesis 37 11, here is the masculine third person singular. He did something. V'yikan uvo echav ve'aviv shamar et hadavar, talking about Jacob. His brothers were jealous of him, and his father kind of thought about it. He 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 kept this idea. He's watching the idea, the thing that's happening. He's keeping it to himself. In Psalm 119, verse 167, shamra nafshi edotecha. This is a feminine form, she guarded, because the word nefesh, soul, is feminine. She guarded your testimonies. In Deuteronomy 5, 32, here is a third-person plural form, 
ushamartem la asot ka asher tziva Yehovah Elohechem. Again, in a reversal of translation because of the vav, the converse of vav, but it is conjugated in the perfect tense. And they guarded, or to translate it, and they and you guarded no, and you guarded, or to translate it in the conversive, and you will guard to do everything that God has commanded. Uh, Exodus thirty one sixteen Vishamru v'nei Yisrael et Hashabbat. And the children of Israel will keep, by translation of the Vav conversive, but conjugated in the perfect tense. I'm sorry this is so confusing, and I don't understand why it is that way, but I'm just trying to explain to you that it is that way. This, is, uh, this verse is part of the, um, the, the Sabbath liturgy, and the children of Israel will keep the Sabbath. To do the Sabbath, to their generations, it is an everlasting covenant. And looking over some of these, uh, the weak verbs, the more irregular verbs, the drop letter imperfect is not impacted uh, by the perfect tense. Hollow verbs are impacted. We'll look at those. The Lamed Aleph verbs are not that you would notice. Um, <clears throat> Lamed Hay verbs are impacted. We will look at those. Lamed Ayin and Lamed Chet verbs, not so much. So our hollow verb is Bo. It has a Vav in the middle. As you recall from the present tense, the Vav does not appear in the participle tense. And it does not appear in the perfect tense either. We're just going to see these endings. Umayaz bati el paro. And so in Exodus 5.23, from then I came to Pharaoh. Looks quite normal. Has no vowels. Uh, Genesis 16.8, this is actually a feminine form, but uh, Vayomer Hagar Shifchat Sarai Emize Bat, where did you come from? This is a feminine form, uh, speaking, the angel is speaking to Hagar, and so he asks her, Emizebat, where did you come from, Va'anatahi, and where are you going? In Genesis 14.5, here is a third person, masculine singular, uh, talking about Keter Laomer and the kings that came with him. In the 14th year, ba, he came. Now, if you remember, this form is exactly the same form as the participle tense. So hollow verbs tend to be like that. The third person masculine, he, uh, and the third person feminine, singular, she, those two forms will be the same in the present and in the past. They look exactly the same, which leads to some translation dilemmas. Here I think we can safely say it's the past because if you come down to the next verb, veyaku, and they smote, and that is um, indicated to be in the past tense by the Vav conversive. So we know uh, this happened a long time ago. Ketala Omer is probably not at the moment coming anywhere. But back in Abraham's time, he came. It's the past tense. Genesis 15, 17, here's a feminine form, and we have the same concept for translation. Vayehi Hashemesh Ba'ah. 
and beho and it was the sun was coming um it's a little bit backwards in hebrew if the sun is coming or going but here they use the word ba for the sun actually setting ba'alatahaya and it was darkness so the haya tells us that's definitely past tense so we can assume the previous verb also the ba'a is in past tense but it is the third person feminine singular and it looks the same it's spelt the same as the participle for the plural we we came we see in genesis 43:21 vayahi kivanu el hamalon and it was that when we came to the hotel so this is joseph brothers they're talking about when when they got to they're relating the story when they got to the inn and they opened their uh, backpacks or sacks and all the money was in it. Genesis 26.7, here is a second person plural, all y'all. Isaac is talking, he says, why did you come to me? After all, you've been hating me, and you sent me away. So, madua batem, why did all y'all, why did you plural come? And here is the form for they. Speaking of the animals on the ark, shnayim shnayim ba'u el noach, and they came two by two, they came to Noah. Now we'll look at a Lamet Hey verb. Asa means to make or do. And here we have some pretty radical change in this form. You remember that in the present tense, there's slight vowel shift for the feminine, but in the plural, feminine singular, but for the plural, we lose the hey altogether. And so that's what's happening here. We lose the hay altogether, but we get an extra yud, and you're going to see it um, in all the almost all the forms. So in Genesis 7:4, we see it says asit. So there's no hay, there's no patach under the second letter like shamarti. It becomes a chiri. But the T is the same. It's a very recognizable, I did something, a CT, which I did or which I made, God speaking about his creation. In Genesis 4.10, here's the second person uh, talking about Cain. Ma asita, what did you do? Second person singular. Uh, in Ruth 2.11, here's the feminine form. And we see that uh, we've lost the shva under the tav, which is not uncommon in the different uh, weak verbs. So Boaz is talking to Ruth, and he says, It has been told to me everything that you did for your mother-in-law. So we just see the form asit. The tav is there, but no shva. In the third person, masculine looks pretty regular, but we have two kamats in Genesis 1.31. And Elohim saw everything which he made. Kol asher asa ma'od, and it was very good. In Genesis 27.17, we have the third person feminine singular, she. And again, there's a change, actually, in the letters. And there is no yud, but there also is the hay of the root is gone. Instead of the hay of the root or for the yud that we've been using, we have an extra tav. So it becomes asta. This verse talking about Rebecca, the food that she made, and she gave it into the hand of Jacob by which to deceive her husband and his father. For the first person plural, 
we did something again now we see the yud returns i see new but the new is still the same at the end for all y'all what you did again we have the yud we have the normal ending in genesis 44 5 the evil that you did evil which you did i see tem Here is a plural feminine form for all you all in Exodus 1.18, talking about the midwives. So it's a feminine plural. Madua asitem hadavar hazeh. Madua asiten hadavar hazeh. Why did all y'all midwives do this thing? We see the ending. In Genesis 18.21, we see the plural ending, no yud. No hey, just that third person plural ending of the shuruk. God is talking about his descent. He's going down to see what's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah if it is if they have done everything. If they have done all those things according to the cry that has come up to him. So that is the general. So that covers the pa'al tense. So that covers the perfect pa'al the endings are always going to be the same endings, regardless of the binyan. There might be some other things that happen. We'll see those as we cover the, the other binyanim. But those endings, you must learn, but then you will always be able to recognize them on every verb. So next time we'll go on to a different binyan. In the meantime, keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.